Hey everybody, welcome back to Week in Geekdom. Gio here, and today we're doing another first impressions video on two manga series that recently debuted on Shonen Jump, and it is of course Blue Box and Candy Flurry. So the last first impressions video that I did was way back at the beginning of the year and I talked about four new series. Now here we are with two more and I know, I know I'm a little bit late, precisely like 10 weeks late, but nonetheless uh, it is something that I wanted to talk about. Even if you already know about the series and you've already made your minds about it, it's alright, here we are sharing my opinions on these two series which are totally different from each other and I'd love that Shonen Jump can take its time to uh, build up a catalog of really diverse titles. You got your Shonen battle manga stuff and you got things like Blue Box, which it's a rom-com, it's sports, it's slice of life, all bundled up together and I absolutely loved it. So the story of Blue Box is quite simple but beautiful in its execution. We're following the character of Taiki Inomata, who is on the boys' badminton team at this powerhouse school. I believe it's a junior or senior high, and he is in love with the basketball player, Chinatsu Kano. She is sort of the all-star top athlete on the female basketball team. And when the story kicks off, Taiki is this sort of shy, nervous yet uh, determined kid because he's actually pretty freaking good at what he does when it comes to sports but he doesn't have the nerve to talk to Chinatsu. Opportunity presents itself and we find out that she is actually quite the wholesome nice individual and there is some sort of chemistry there you know it's a little bit tropey I'm not gonna lie but it's still fun to see a love story in development like this where you don't necessarily have the characters in the same area or in the same sports field, if you will. So Taiki's moment with Chinatsu blossoms when opportunity strikes and we find out that Chinatsu is, uh, her family is supposed to leave out of the country but she's gonna stay because she's also a very young, spirited, determined individual. She's a top athlete. So she decides to stay and uh, Taiki of course is relieved because uh, he can still see her and possibly have more opportunities to talk to her and then and, and maybe become friends or something else. And the cool twist here being that Taiki's mom used to play on the same team with Chinatsu's mom. So they knew each other from high school and sports and all that stuff. So Taiki's mom volunteers to let Chinatsu stay at their house which comes as a complete shock and surprise to our main protagonist, who is just <laughs> through the roof with excitement. And, you know, he is given the golden opportunity to make this possible relationship blossom, start, or happen. And the story just kicks off from there. The art in it is absolutely beautiful. I love the character designs and the character models and how expressive and beautiful they are especially when they're just uh, doing the thing that they love, whether it's on the basketball court and stuff like that, you really see the emotion and the fluidity of the characters and how nice the mangaka has drawn the facial structures for the characters, especially Chinatsu. Now, I should have mentioned at the start that the story is created by Koji Miura. I'm not aware of the mangaka, but she is crushing it when it comes to these sorts of stories. I've looked up her uh, different works and they all share a similar theme with their art, but it's very beautiful and honestly quite breathtaking for a Shonen Jump manga. So yeah, I, I know we've gotten rom-coms in the past, but I like the idea that it's not, like I said earlier, it's not the similar uh, sports disciplines. It's two completely different things but you find a common ground or a common element with themes of perseverance and first loves and these characters be trying to awkwardly be friends and not really knowing each other, but here's this great opportunity to meet up and, and see if something develops out of it. Of course, 
um, <laughs> our main character is pretty straightforward in his ambitions and how much he uh, loves the character of Chinatsu and wants to know her better. But Chinatsu, maybe at the beginning, doesn't really know what uh, Taiki's intentions are or doesn't necessarily see him that way. So I'm only 10 chapters in as of the recording of this video and I absolutely loved it. I love uh, having these uh, mixed sports slash rom-coms together. It, it makes for a very exciting uh, will they, won't they read and all that fun stuff. Obviously throwing in the elements and the tropes of a sports manga is awesome and I really enjoy it. I'm so looking forward to more chapters to see how this uh, potential couple develops, if you will. Next up from Ippon Takeguchi comes a very unique story that blends a lot of action elements with just the craziness of manga. And I love how creative it can be. And it is of course, Candy Flurry. This is a world where toy toy candy is introduced. And if you eat one of these magical sweets, you gain candy powers. It can be lollipops, ice cream, popcorn, whatever you're thinking of when it comes to sweets, it becomes a giant weapon that you can use. And it lends itself to some uh, battle shown in mechanics and super heroics and stuff like that. So at the start of the story, we are told that there was an incident where Tokyo was basically demolished by a lollipop user, literally using a giant lollipop to decimate uh, the city and the culprit was never caught. So there is a warrant out for uh, the arrest. I believe people lost their lives or were displaced from their homes. I'm, my memory is a little bit foggy doing this video, but something like that. A lot of tragedy happened that day. And we fast forward to present time and we follow the character of Minase Sumugi, who is this cocky brat that will at the start of the manga, we'll take advantage of the situation using her <laughs> brawns and, and cuteness and all that stuff to uh, gain certain things and, and behave a certain way. But when the first incidents in the opening chapters begin and we find out that Minas's ability is that she's also a lollipop user, things get interesting. You see in this world, there cannot be duplicates of the candy powers. So if somebody finds out that she's a lollipop user, they're gonna accuse her of being the uh, attacker that destroyed the city of Tokyo. Now, obviously she didn't do it, it doesn't really match, and she's out there, uh, eventually, you know, somebody finds out, so she's going to try and disprove everything and let everybody know that she's not the lollipop user that people are thinking of, and she's just doing her own thing. She just happens to really like sweets, candy, and of course, lollipops. It's a very interesting world, really well constructed from the get-go. You get the rules immediately. The art is really nice, especially with it, the, you know, the character models and them unleashing their powers. It's a very dynamic line work that I really enjoy. The faces and all that stuff are really well made and it keeps you engaged and interested in reading more chapters. The character of Minase, you know, she when she unleashes her powers with the lollipop, it is visually striking because you're not used to seeing a common thing like sweets being used in such a ferocious, uh, powerful way like, a, you know, a weapon. There is the Reset, who are basically the police force, special forces of this world, and they are looking for any culprits and people you know, violating the law and, and using their magical sweet abilities to harm people or steal or do whatever. And the second character that we get introduced to is Misaki Midori, who is a young reset officer who uh, doesn't really like the magic sweets. So he's going to use tools like a freaking giant fork to fight off uh, evildoers. And when he finds out about Minase, he starts doubting her, but through their interactions, he sort of sides with her and you start meeting other people. And of course, Minase gets the idea to actually join the reset to not only clear her name, potentially, as well as, you know, uh, get 
stronger and, and get down to the bottom of the mystery of the lollipop user and all that stuff. So yeah, this has elements of stuff that you might have read before, but it's the combination and how the author uses these elements and tropes that really makes it stand out from the rest of the battle shown in uh, manga that are around right now. I love the visuals with the candy and the sweets. It makes for a very visually appealing series, especially when you get any colored pages. I do hope that the manga can continue onward and onward so that we can get more colored pages because I think that's really going to benefit Candy Flurry and how nice it's going to look in the future. So there you have it guys, two new imaginative series. These are crazy, wild premises. Well, maybe for Candy Flurry, not so much for Blue Box, but you get the picture. They're pretty creative in my opinion. But what about you guys? What did you think of Candy Flurry and Blue Box? If you're currently reading them, let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, being a part of A Week in Geekdom. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. That's it for me, guys. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next episode.